What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today guys we are not talking about blades. We're going to talk about a firearm and I've finally, finally got to the point where I feel comfortable and go ahead. I'm going to do the in-depth tabletop review of the Taurus G3 9mm semi-auto pistol. Look at that beautiful pistol there, guys. Let's drop that empty magazine out of it. Let's lock that slide back. We have cleared that weapon, and it is safe. All right, the Taurus G3. Now, I have done one video comparing the real differences between the Taurus G3 and the Taurus G2C. And we will we'll see more of those two pistols or these two pistols on video as I'm going to do a separate, a third video focusing solely on the perceived quality differences between the Taurus G series or modern Taurus semi auto pistols and all other kinds of semi auto pistols. I mean, right here, I've got a Glock on hand. Right here, I've got an XD on hand. Uh, right here, we've got a Ruger on hand. We've got all of these polymer frame striker fire pistols for that video. But in this video, we're going to focus on the G3 that we've got right here, guys. Let us set it aside very quickly. We've got to get a ton of stuff into this video. We're going to go ahead and pull out the packaging. We're not going to spend a bunch of time on it. It's Taurus box, guys. It is a cardboard box. It's not a fancy plastic case. In that, you're going to find a very good manual, a very good manual information. There's my receipt for buying this. How much was this pistol, Baz on Blades? It was $229, $229, and I did grab mine as soon as they came out. That was the going rate at the time. Uh, I have seen a low of $214 on some of the buyer's clubs um, and up to the, the $229 range that I paid, and even some places that are asking $250 for this pistol. But I got it out the door for $262. That is with my local state sales tax and the background check. That is not too shabby for a gun that I have basically uh, and totally fallen in love with. The Taurus G3. Taurus is saying this is a full-size pistol, but you know I think that it's more of a compact service pistol, much like the Glock 19, which this is very similar in size to, is in relation to the Glock 17. The Glock 17 being the full-size service pistol, the Glock 19 being the uh, compact service pistol, and then the Glock 26 being like a subcompact service pistol. This is comparable in size to the Glock 19, just very nearly for all intents and purposes is the same exact size as the 19, just a few uh, little differences. Your overall length of this pistol is 7 inches. The height is 5 inches. Your thickness, guys, on the front part of the slide that's undercut a little bit, you're looking at 980 thousandths thickness. That's less than an inch. You step back here, and you are at 1.05 inches. And then if you take in your controls, most notably the manual safety that is on the G3, you step up to 1.2 inches. It's competitive with everything out there. In certain ways, it's a little slimmer. Um, you know, the manual safety, guys, let's take a look at that. Let's quit acting like that's some huge thing you got to worry about carrying. It's um, three quarters of an inch long, maybe, and is, uh, guys, that's, that's just... It's just small. It's small. Quit acting like that safety's in your way. Uh, it, it's not in the way, guys. 
Uh, don't even get me started on the safety. Don't even get Baz on blade started on that manual safety because he's going to start ranting about all the crazy crap that he hears on the internet. And he doesn't want to do that. We just want to talk about this pistol. And this pistol is pretty lightweight, guys. Now, I weighed it out. It's 1.38 pounds without the magazine. That's 22.1 ounces. With the empty magazine, it is 1.55 pounds, and that is 24.8 ounces. It is within about an ounce of what the Glock 19 is. It is within less than a quarter of an inch of what the height is. Uh, the length on the two pistols is pretty much the same, guys. The thickness, the Taurus is slimmer than the Glock 19, and it feels that way in the hand. Now, is it totally a great deal world changing slimmer? Well, no, it's not. It's still a double stack pistol. And I think that we're really getting into the realm where you're not going to get a lot thinner. Uh, I mean, you're at an inch, uh, 1.2 inches with the controls in it. I don't think we're going to get a lot thinner than an inch on double stack polymer striker fire pistols i think i feel like the balance between sidewall strength on the polymer uh balancing that out with um, lightweight and thinness I, I think we're right at that range where we're pretty much optimal with polymers and i'm happy with that i'm happy with that uh, we see more of a difference in these pistols from one brand of another um, the big differences are in the grip shape the grip angle, you know, you got your Glock angle, you know, like this, and then you've got your more Western uh, American angle here, your your brown and sort of 1911 type of angle, guys. Um, you know, you've got a different shape, roundness to your back strap and front strap, and you know, you can see the difference. Let's pull this Glock out here, guys. Look at how square that looks in comparison to the G3. Now, it's not a great deal bigger for what it is, but it is different feeling. This is a more ergonomic feeling grip as far as I'm concerned, and it is a little thinner. Now we've got the numbers out of the way. Let's talk about this pistol. It is a fiber reinforced polymer frame pistol with inset uh, trigger group and mechanics. There are steel rails on it. You do have a forged steel slide. You do have a stainless steel barrel. Uh, the original factory sights are plastic, non-adjustable sights. I have changed those for the new uh, Taurus um, factory night sights for this pistol. They're the same side profile. They're a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, and the sight window, sorry, I hit the tripod. The sight window, guys, is much more open and tactical. Um, these sights are great for grabbing a fast sight acquisition, but I'm not gonna be shooting at 50 yards trying to shoot bullseye with those uh, those sites. They're not target sites. They are a more modern combat oriented target or a combat oriented uh, quick reaction site. Now let's pull the trigger on that, cheat that slide back. We're going to go ahead and pop it off because it breaks down just like the Glock. I've got a Glock right here and it breaks down exactly the same. Let's take a look at the inside of the slide and you're going to see it's made the same as every other striker fire pistol. We've got a dual captive uh, recoil spring here and guide rod set. And I believe that this has been upgraded to a metal shaft. I, um, I have not seen any reason at all to change this. I've not had any issues, but if you want to put an aftermarket uh, recoil spring assembly in it, then go ahead. There is your uh, rammed and supported stainless barrel. It looks like every other barrel out there, guys. It's uh, the bullet goes in this end and it comes out this end much faster than it went in. Um, 
and then you know downrange it punches holes in things and i think that's pretty much what all of these pistols do the taurus does it just as well and as far as assembly disassembly reassembly just like the glock guys there you go now i am going to say you notice that I bobbled a little bit putting that slide back on. The slide on the Taurus, there's a clearance thing that it does not have as much clearance for a part as a lot of other striker fire pistols. Um, it is, it requires that slide to be lined up, guys. Um, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or, a, you know, a here or there or whatever. I, and I don't care. Um, it's, it's a pistol. It's not like I'm... I'm putting together an atomic bomb or anything. It's just a pistol. So you've seen a little bit of the inside there. You've seen the outside here. What do you want to talk about? What do you guys want to talk about? Let's talk about the slide, the finish on the slide. Uh, you know what? I think it's a melanite finish. It does have more of a coarse texture. It is not as coarse as a parkerized finish. Uh, but it's also not as slick as, say, this Gen 4 finish on this Glock 35 here. So, um, I don't know how it's going to wear. I've started carrying it in a piece of Kydex that I got for it. Uh, it is showing some burnishing as it rubs on the Kydex. I, I, don't, I don't know how this finish is going to wear. And frankly, I don't care, guys. Um, finishes wear off. I think everybody, at this point, we all come to the realization that no black finish, no matter what it is, lasts forever. It all rubs off. You've got to maintain, uh, unless you've got a stainless slide on your pistol. And, and you know, then you've got a little more freedom there as far as finding rust. But, um, the sights, guys, they are Glock attached front. That means a set screw from underneath. And the back is dovetailed. It is a dedicated Taurus dovetail. Uh, it is the same dovetail that's used on the G2C and the TX-22, uh, 22 long rifle semi-auto pistol. And these sights, these Taurus factory night sights, will fit those other pistols. I'm going to pull out that packaging. Now, I have... I have already shot a video dedicated to these sites. I will try to remember to drop a link down in the description section of this video. And you guys can go over and check these out. They are made by Ameriglow for Taurus. And they are pretty much Ameriglow's Spartan operator sites. Meaning you have an orange focal ring on the front surrounding a green tritium vial. On the back, it is black. You can see the vials on the back. They don't really have rings. They're in um, it, probably aluminum casings, and that metal you see is just the edge of that casing. So, it, it, you know, with the reflection of the light, you can see those lamps, but they're not really colored other than the glow color which is green to match the front. And there is uh, your sight picture on those. Once again, the aftermarket sights are steel. The factory sights are plastic. Um, let's see. Um, these these uh, replacement sights are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit taller. Um, and uh, I, I really like them myself. I Honestly, at $79, for a set of night sights, uh, I recommend them. You know, I put night sights on all my pistols. I recommend them on your pistols. Uh, I love the orange front focal ring. Um, no issues there. Let's drop down to the frame right here and look at that. It's plastic. Um, just like this Glock and just like this XD, and just like the other Taurus I've got, just like the Ruger I've got here, they are fiber reinforced thermal plastics that are molded in molds. Um, when I do my quality video, I am going to talk extensively about that because, surprise, surprise, Bazon Blades has a little bit of a background in plastic molding. 
So we will take a look at that. Um, I think that it is a quality done molding. Um, there is no shift. There is no excessive flashing lines. Um, everything is clean. Um, the, the molds obviously are very detailed. Uh, there is a lot going on in this frame. You've got a Picatinny rail. Uh, it's actual Picatinny and it's three slots. You've got all of these memory bump groove locations for your thumbs, uh, a very pronounced shelf and location here, and some of the best traction you will find in this stippling on this grip. This is the um, sort of modern new wave sandpaper type stippling that you will see on uh, the Taurus G2C and the G3. Uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 series. Um, also, I believe the same type of stippling is on the SIG P365. And um, it's, it's very, very good. It is very good. Um, in fact, I stabbed myself in the hand with something yesterday, so it's a little sensitive right here. And uh, just sitting here holding this pistol, um, it's irritating that spot a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, on regular skin, it's not super irritating. Now, if you carry this IWB, um, inside the waistband and this is rubbing up against your skin of your stomach or your side or the small of your back or um, you know your what however you're carrying it if this is rubbing on your skin it's probably going to rub it raw guys I mean we don't have calluses built up around our waist um, that's pretty sensitive skin it's it's fairly protected for mo most of your life so that can be a little coarse for that you can wear an undershirt with it. Uh, you could take some light sandpaper and just touch off on the top and take a slight percentage of that grip away from it, make it a little more comfortable. But I like it the way it is. And to me, this is a big enough pistol to where I'm not going to be carrying it IWB. So let's see here. Magazine capacity on this. Well, there is different... Um, kits with the Taurus G3. I do not, oh my God, I don't even have my other magazine out here, guys. Hold on a second. Good grief, I've got everything but what I need out here. So you've got a 17 round magazine where they slide on sleeve. Uh, a lot of people are going to complain about that sleeve because it slides freely. And you know what? I don't even use this magazine. I, I, I actually prefer the 15 round magazine. Um, you know, when I'm just shooting paper or something, I use this. But other than that, I, I honestly, I just, I'm going to buy some more 15 round magazines for this pistol. I like that. Um, that look to it. I like that capacity to it, the ease of carry also trying to uh, carry with that extended grip for the 17 round magazine. That's just not my thing. Um, but it's a, it's a Metgar magazine. These are Metgar magazines, steel magazines, bright followers. Um, both of these magazines have been totally trouble-free for me. I have left both of them loaded for extended periods of time with no evidence at all of any issues. Um, zero issues. Let, let me stress again. Almost 1,000 rounds, about 900 rounds. Zero issues. No malfunctions. Okay, no malfunctions at all, guys. And let's see, let's see. Yeah, I'm so, I, I, you know, I'm not a firearms reviewer, guys. So I, I'm, you know, I'm sort of all over the place here. Uh, but as far as the grip goes, again, a more American straight up grip style. If you're comfortable with a 1911, you'll be comfortable with that. There are no replaceable grip inserts. There's only one size but it is a good size. My medium large hands, I have large hand size with medium finger length, and that's how it fits me right there. It is a very ergonomic feeling and very comfortable feeling. It is hands down, it's one of the best polymer 
um, grips that I've grabbed a hold of personally. Now, will it work uh, great for you? I don't know. I don't have your hands, but it works great for me. Manual safety. Do you guys love a manual safety? You hate a manual safety or you're actually grown up adults and you can whatever. You don't even care. It's just a manual safety. And um, I believe you could probably train a not really smart monkey to use a manual safety. Uh, I think as human beings, we can learn how to use them. I have no issue there. But admittingly, I wish that Taurus would do the G2C and the G3 with no manual safety as an option. It would really, it would probably double the sales of these pistols. I know a lot of people, they just won't buy it because it's got a manual safety, and which I think is crazy, but that's up to them. So Taurus, really, you need to consider the option of bringing a no manual safety model. Um, I, I think you will be surprised at how many of them you will sell. Now, let's see here. Um, rear and forward cocking serrations on the slide. They are deeply cut. They are crisply cut. They are, they are easy to grab a hold of. Sorry, guys. Uh, both fore and rear here uh, for, you know, doing your press checks or, I mean, whatever, guys. Um, the slide is easy to manipulate. That is one of the things that people comment about when they take a look at this pistol. They're like, oh, wow, that sure does cock real easy for what it is. And you know what? It feels easy to me, too, although I don't have any issues with hand strength or arm strength, and I, I don't have any issues um, cocking and charging uh, pretty much any pistol that I've ever uh, messed around with. So keep that in mind. We talked about takedown, guys. Um, let's talk about accuracy with this pistol. Um, no surprise to anyone, the pistol is more accurate than Bazon Blades is. We're going to move this pistol out of the way really quick. I'm going to bring some targets out here, guys. I've got some actual targets for my shooting. Um, let's see. First up here, uh, what we've got here is uh, 124 grain Federal HST, 15 rounds. This is at 21 feet, uh, the mythical FBI 21 feet. That is a 2.27 inch group at 21 feet. Now, the rest of these targets are all shot at an honest 30 feet. Uh, we've got here, this is 15 rounds of 124 grain FMJ at 30 feet. That is a 3 and 3 quarter inch group. Pretty much average for Bazon Blades. Uh, here is another group of the same thing, and these are 15 round groups. They're 15 rounds of full magazine. Uh, 15 rounds of 124 grain FMJ at 30 feet, three and a quarter inches. Uh, from another day of shooting, here is a not as good group, and it's the same 124 grain FMJ at 30 feet. That is 15 rounds. Um, with this flyer, it's a five inch group, but without that, it is three and three eighths of an inch. And that's what I typically shoot. I'm around that three to three and a half inch group. Now, the funny thing is, is I shoot everything that way because here's a group from the same day with the XD Tactical. This is 10 rounds of 230 grain ball into a three inch group right there the same day. Look at that, guys. Look at that. The same day, two different pistols at two different calibers, and that's that's what Baz on Blade shoots. I shoot three, three and a half inches most of the time. And then last of last but not least here, we have a silhouette target, guys. It's a two-thirds IDPA B27 target. It's 15 rounds up at the head and three and three quarters of an inch with one flyer out here off target. And then here, center mass, 15 rounds in three and a half inches. Again, with 124 grain FMJ. So, 
I think that this pistol is much more accurate than Bazaar Blades is. No issues there. Uh, it is a joy to shoot. Let's drop this magazine and we're going to take a look at the trigger pull. Now, the trigger pull is a whole bunch of very light spring pressure empty take up. There's nothing there. You go straight back to the wall, watch the break. There's no creep, guys. There's no creep. It is super clean. Bring out the reset, a very short reset. I do have a Glock on hand. It is just as short a reset as that Glock. It's very short, guys, very tactile. Uh, my example is, I would say it's a breaking at an estimate right at five pounds. Um, it's, it's not over five pounds. Uh, the pull is very clean. Now here is the restrike pull. One of the great things about this pistol is it's almost like it's a double action pistol. You can restrike trigger pull, uh, a full manual pull, if you have bad primers or any issue and you want to restrike on a load to see if it will fire and then back into single action shooting off of the reset again a whole bunch of just empty take up there's very little spring pressure you can instantly stage back to the wall and there's your wall guys uh, let's take a very close look we'll let it all the way out we're going to take it back up to the wall there's no creep it is a super clean it's a super clean trigger pull. A lot of people don't like it because it's got the uh, initial take up here. And the reason that it does, you've got to accommodate that restrike capability. Um, when it is not cocked and you have to pull that, your trigger pull is cocking the striker. That movement, that room to do that has got to be built into that trigger pull. And there you go. Once more single action, you reset, and there you go guys, and there is your double strike, and it feels like it's going to be about seven pounds to me. Um, so it, it is heavier, it's not heavy if, if you compare it to a lot of uh, double action trigger pulls, it's not heavy at all, and the option is there for you. Now. Uh, let's bring in one more thing here. I have been looking for a holster for this. Uh, this size of pistol, I prefer to carry outside the waistband on my strong side in a pancake style holster, but I haven't been able to really find anything. I did find this Kydex pancake style holster. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, the name of the company is Infused Kydex underscore USA, and they are on eBay. This holster was $29, and I don't really like it for the G3, and here is the reason why. It's got very good retention but you see the muzzle of the gun stick out. Uh, what I think they have done is they have offered this holster for the G3, but it is actually a holster for the G2C, and because they will fit the same holster, that's good to go. All right, perfect fit for the G2C, and that's what I'm going to use this holster for. Um, I, I, you know, it may seem crazy that I don't like... Um, the muzzle sticking out as far as you know the g3 fit in this but i i just don't like that guys i don't like that part of the pistol being uncovered uh to everything around it um, it doesn't really make a difference in the way that it carries i've carried it for a few days like this in this holster uh great retention guys um now as far as the holster itself it's fairly well made. It's a $29 holster. I did have to relieve all the edges on it uh, to soften it up. I typically do that with all Kydex holsters. Uh, it does have a fairly tight fit. It does have just a little bit of rock this way. It's rocking around the retention point right here. Now, when you strap it on and you put a belt through it and draw it tight, all of that goes away. 
it's a very firm fit and you can tell i mean listen to that retention okay that's retention guys so no issues there infused kydex underscore usa i believe is what it is i'll put a link in the description section all right we're going to cut this taurus g3 tabletop review off um I, I mean guys i've showed you in this video i've showed you in the comparison video nearly a thousand rounds trouble free and far far less than 300 dollars cost on this pistol it is a winner go and put your hands on it and see how it feels to you don't worry about that manual safety at first you can train around that manual safety it is well placed it's very positive it's well done so no issues there the taurus g3 baz on blades is going to recommend the taurus g3 as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos god bless all of you and we will talk to you again